What's up, y'all? Y'all know who it is. Y'all know what it is. It's your boy JP. Come to y'all with a very special how to. Our friends over at Cadence Sound gave us some very special product so we can show you properly how to install your own sub and amp combo. And in this video, we're going to talk about everything how to run your power wire through the firewall. We're going to talk about proper placements for your amp as far as mounting, uh, different ways to hook up the sub. We're going to talk about LOCs, all that good stuff. And we're going to start right now. Now, if this is your first time tuning in to the channel, please consider subscribing because this is what we do here car audio tutorials radio removals q and a's all that good stuff I'm, I'm tired of talking let's go ahead and start installing all right y'all so in order to install your own sub and amp you're going to need a couple components and we're about to go over all of that stuff right now first let's start with the sub this is provided by our friends over at cadence sound is the beast i want to say the model number is a b2 uh, no, B12D2. This is a 12 inch woofer, uh, dual two ohm sub. It is 1600 max, 800 watts RMS. A uh, very nice, beastly looking sub. Nice ventilation at the bottom and right here for the voice calls. Very nice piece. Uh, we're going to pair that up with our Cadence QR1000.1 amplifier. So, uh, first off, let's go over wiring options. So, with this sub, uh, since it is a dual two ohm sub, we have a couple different ways that we can wire this up. We can series it and we can get uh, four ohms coming from the amplifier or we can parallel and drop it down to a one ohm since this is one ohm stable. That's what we will be doing. Uh, if you're confused about what I'm talking about, uh, there's a link in the card and in the description so you can find out how to wire up your subs. I go over all that type of stuff. But uh, that's the combination that they sent us and it's going to match up perfectly uh, to cover the arm mess for that sub with this amp. Next this sub is uh it sounds best in a sealed enclosure uh, about one and a quarter cubes max and that's exactly what we have here we have a sealed box it's about 1.2 cubes so that should be pretty good uh the next thing that we need is going to be a amplifier kit this is the most important because this is how you're going to get power and signal to the amp so your amplifier kit should consist of your power wire uh, your ground wire you should have some speaker wire right here you also need a remote turn on wire this is basically just 18 gauge primary uh, so if you want to build your own kit you can buy all your separate components but it's just easier and sometimes cheaper to buy a full kit uh, also we have our RCAs now this kit is by true connects true connects is a metro brand and they use a hundred percent OFC copper and uh, I like using it they give you 12 gauge uh, speaker wire which is pretty cool as well and that's what you, we would need to actually to send signal to our amp now uh, since we are going to a factory system we need a line output converter what this is going to do is we're going to hook up these wires high level which basically means we're going to tap into the speaker uh, speaker levels of this and it's going to output a low level signal which is that RCA in the back so we're going to show you how to do that as well let's go ahead and get going all right guys so hooking up your system is really easy but the hardest part is trying to find out how do we get that power wire from the battery to inside the car the main thing the first thing that you want to look for is a plastic or rubber grommet and what a grommet is is basically a rubber boot that all these wires that's coming off the battery they're already making their way into the car through the firewall so there's already a pretty big hole with wires going through it now in this case on this Nissan Rogue there is the boot right there one thing that we can try is going in on the inside and seeing if we can't just take a pierce a hole through the rubber uh, put our fish tool through it and then just run the wire through we're gonna see if that works but if it doesn't we need to find another way in and what we can do is if I come over here I see that there's a whole lot of real estate to where if I was to drill a hole through the firewall that I won't touch anything so if we can't make it over here then we're definitely going to go over there because we're into making work smarter we're into working smarter not harder so uh let's go on the inside and see if this is a good option all right guys so we know that we have a grommet somewhere but we have all this crap in the way so the part that's actually poking out right here this is where we want to get to to see even if this is going to be the best option possible so i'm going to take my box cutter and i'll start cutting away on the back side of that uh, stuff. 
thing cut away and as you can see there is a small little gap in that grommet uh, there's also wires right behind it now what I will usually do is try to find some type of way to poke a hole through there but in this case I got all this in the way this is the emergency brake and uh, it's kind of hard to get my hand back there to try to poke a hole through now looks like I'm not even gonna try to go over here if we were at a shop and time was of the essence then this is gonna take a long time to try to pierce through and not damage anything I feel like I can come over here and take a couple screws out and undo the glove box and punch a hole in the next couple seconds and I think that's what I'm gonna actually do all right so for this Nissan Rogue this little piece right here I just went on ahead and popped it off uh, you use your panel removal tool or whatever we're gonna drop that glove box I do see that there is a Phillips right there there's a couple across the top and one at the bottom I'm gonna go ahead and take all of those out and drop this glove box all right um, so after I took them last two out this thing is held down by some more clips so you know just kind of yank that out all right so next question uh, how the hell do we know where we're gonna be at on the other side? Uh, the answer is check a million times. I promise you, you can never check enough uh, so you don't actually cut through anything. Now, uh, this right here is a small little uh, bolt and it's probably bolted on the other side the exact same way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the engine and see if we can see that. If we can, then we're just gonna cut a little hole right next to it and then we should be good and boom there it is right here there's that same bolt so what we're gonna do is to my right so if we go inside the car that would be to the left we're gonna cut a little bit out and we're gonna drill that hole all right i've checked like a billion times so i'm pretty confident that nothing's on the other side of here so i'm gonna use a pretty big drill bit usually i'll start off with the small one but uh i think i think we're gonna be good Okay, so now that we see where our hole is gonna come out at, uh, we're gonna go ahead and open that thing up so it can fit our bushing. All right, so we've changed bits to this uh, step drill bit. I am in love with this. This one is made by Klein. Actually shows you the, uh, the settings, not the settings, but the measurements of where you're gonna drill to. Now. All right, y'all, I'm pretty sure we drilled that uh, three quarters big. Uh, it doesn't have to be that big if you were only doing the wire, but we wanna protect our wire. So let's go ahead and take our snap bushing, go through here. And see how it just snaps in like that. Now that right there is perfect. Now we can fish our wire straight through and it's not gonna touch any metal. All right, so now we gotta hook up our power wire to our battery and then neatly get it over there to the hole that we just drilled. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. All of them will work. You just pick which one you wanna do. You can keep both of those connected. You can take the fuse out of here because without that fuse being in line, then there will be no current passing through this wire while you're running it back there to the amplifier. Or uh, you can go ahead and take this part up because this is where your wire is exposed at, that little piece at the top. And then we're going to uh, hook it up, run it uh, neatly and safely all the way up to the amp. And when you hook your wire up to the amp, you're gonna get the same small arc on the amplifier, just like you would if you were to hook this fuse back up after it's all hooked up. Because what you're doing is you're waking up those MOSFETs inside the amplifier. So uh, I'm gonna do it this way, that last way I told you, because if I do it like that, I don't have to worry about coming back to the engine. So we're gonna dress this up. I would, I do like using this Tex, uh, Tech Flex. This is like a braided sleeve. It makes it look really sexy, but I don't have any heat shrink. I could use uh, just electrical tape with that, um, but it's a little bit more work than I'm trying to do right now. So we're just gonna use this uh, split loom. It's gonna still make it look factory and uh, make it look really good. So I'm gonna loom this up probably about a good six feet. And then next thing I'm gonna do is connect this to the battery and then I'm going to actually drill some holes in this plastic part to zip tie my wire up to. That's going to keep it away from the uh, the engine and it's going to make it just look nice and neat. I got a 3 16th drill bit right here and uh, shoot I'm going to go ahead and get it in.
All right, so this was a 12 mil. Took took the took the bolt off. Put my ring on. Put the bolt back on. Uh, I'm gonna end up zip tying this to this. Uh, I think I like how it'll sit right here, so I'm probably gonna drill two holes to run my zip tie through to get right there, and then I'm gonna start keep drilling holes up here, and I'm gonna show you how I get that wired up like that. All right, so now I have everything zip tied to where I said I was gonna have it zip tied to. Uh, it's going on here, it's not touching the engine, and it's going all the way over there. I cut the tails off the zip tie so it looks nice and neat, properly ran. And since I had enough space to get my hand through here, I just felt my hole and I started feeding the uh, feeding the wire through the hole. I'll show you guys how to use that uh, fishing tool a little bit uh, later in a different video. But honestly, if I didn't have the space to reach my hand in, then I would just take my fish tool from the other side, take my wire up to it, and just pull it straight through. But now that I have all this done, I don't have to come back to the front. So all my work will be inside the vehicle, and that's the reason why I do it like that. All right, so uh, I actually ended up moving my wire uh, going along the side, and I zip-tied it. If I can move this thing. I zip-tied it to this loomed wire right here. Now, why did I zip tie to this? Well, from the factory, wherever there's factory wiring, you know that your wire is not gonna be in the way because we're doing the exact same thing that the factory's doing. So, we gotta run down there. I already put it behind that panel. And uh, now, we just gotta run it up under the carpet, uh, which is gonna be easy. Uh, this right here actually has a place for wires to run under. So, guess what we about to do? Take this one. All right, stick it up under there. Stick it up under there, under all of those. That way we're doing the exact same thing that the factory did. And it's still gonna look clean, neat, and all that. And then I'm just gonna pull this wire through. So some of you may be thinking, why don't I pull my RCAs down the same side? You do not wanna run your RCAs and your power wire down the same side, cause that could cause engine noise. And you don't wanna have that. All right, we got one more panel that we need to pop up. Sometimes if you can't get your fingers in there, then you will need a panel removal tool. But, let me say, a lot of time your panels is only flipped, so you might not have to worry, worry about it. Make sure you want to go behind your seatbelt bolt. All right, and we want to keep tucking. Just keep tucking, just keep tucking. All right, guys, if you guys want to take this piece off to run your wire through, you can definitely do that. Um, I promise you, tucking is just as easy as it can get without taking off too many panels because sometimes it don't go on how it came off. If you guys don't have this thing in your way, then it'll make it easier as well. But uh, I went ahead and got my wire all the way through. Now, uh, you can take the whole seat out if you want to, but uh, all we need is this side for right now. just run it up the back part right there and I'm gonna grab it with my other hand and pull it through in just a second all right guys so I actually have this uh, zip tied up here and I have it grounded uh, right here now I want you guys to not judge this because I usually have my wire brush which is an attachment that I put on my drill and uh, that way I can get the paint off of the metal real clean but I had to use my box cutter because I just need to scrape that off and usually I don't do this I'll actually bolt it on this is a 5 16 bolt and a uh, nut with the little flange on the back so I usually drill my hole with the uh, drill bit I use that die to actually go ahead and tap it and then that way I can screw this in bolt it from the back but it will not work on sheet metal because it is too thin it will only work on the frame we do not have enough ground for a frame ground so i had to do this self tapping screw and a lock washer on the bottom and then one on each side for strength and security that thing is not going anywhere and that's how i did my ground now this is actually cea compliant like if you look in the mecp handbook to actually do it like this but you know i like to bolt it but like i said i'll do a video later on on different ways to actually ground but Let's move on to the LOC. All right, guys, so this is our LOC. I'm gonna go over this real quickly because this video is getting really long. So uh, this thing has a 
It has four speaker wires, two whites and two grays. The two whites are going to go to our driver side speaker. The two grays go to our passenger side speaker. It doesn't matter if we use the fronts or the rears in this scenario because we have a base model. So our front and our rear are both full range speakers. It doesn't matter. Um, this brown right here is a reference ground. Sometimes if you get any type of engine noise, you can ground that out and it'll help fix it. I usually don't have any, so I'm just going to cap that off. Uh, now we also have a yellow and a black wire. The reason we have these two is because if we hook this black up to chassis ground and we hook this yellow one up to 12 volt constant, it's going to output me a remote turn on. That way I don't have to try to find an ignition inside the car. With that hooked up, we have our RCAs going to the back. So of course I have everything, um, lined up ready to go i got it taped down there so it actually looks pretty neat and uh i just peeled peeled the panels up just like i did the power wire on that side and i just got it running down this side so now let's actually get back to uh hooking up the amp all right y'all so now we are finally at the amp and uh the reason i'm mounting it on the back of the seat is for a couple different reasons for one i don't like mounting them on the back of the box if i don't have to while that sub is going off it's going to be vibrating and you don't want to vibrate any components in here because this is mounted directly to that piece of wood on the back of the box second if you mount this on the back of the box and somebody wanted to steal your system all they had to do was cut the wires if they broke inside your car and then the whole system's gone and then they can just deal with another amp kit lastly let's just say you're going on a trip and you wanted to move your sub out the way because you want more cargo space or whatever if we have this mounted on the back seat then all we got to do is unplug the speaker wires and then we can use our cargo and we don't have to worry about unhooking the whole amp so let's go ahead and finish with this uh one thing that i like to do is use my uh tester tape and i like to wrap it up it kind of helps it give it like a little cleaner look i got my rcas plugged in right here this is for my base knob i'm gonna end up uh tester taping all of this up and then i'm gonna use some of these uh, to actually hold it in place so you just wrap your wire around this little clamp and then you screw it in that way i can have this uh, kind of going flush along here and then we're going to end up test taping the whole thing going down that way just so it looks all nice and neat all right guys so you can see i got that test tape going around here it's going across the bottom i also have uh put it down like this got everything wired up now this part right here is pretty self-explanatory i didn't think i needed to actually show me putting the wires inside the uh amplifier but uh this one's ground so we put the black one in there that's remote, that's what's gonna turn it on. Here's power, that's the one that's going straight from the amp. And uh, here are our speaker wires. Now this is positive, positive, negative, negative. So it don't matter which one we put it in because we are only hooking up one sub. So you see that I got everything tested tape. Got that little clamp on it. It's loomed real nice going down there. And now uh, I have this to go to my sub. Now let's wire up the sub. All right, so first thing you wanna do when it comes to uh, actually uh, wiring this thing up. I went ahead and stripped back my speaker wires, put these female connectors on. They're going to go on there. Now, I could have uh, just put bare wire in here, solder my connection, and heat shrunk it. But like I said, I don't have any heat shrink, and my soldering iron is dead. So, uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you put your positive and positive on the right ones. Positive is going to be the one on the bottom. I want my clear to be positive. So, on this bottom one, we are going to hook this up now this is a little loose so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and probably squeeze these two together and then now this should give me a tighter connection to where I can yep push it in and it won't come off so I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this one together and put it on as well all right so we are going to wire this thing up in parallel so that means that we're just going to hook up the positive and negatives together so uh what i want to do is make sure i have enough wire to wire this outside the car so i'm going to do this like this or outside the box kind of measure it and then i'm going to cut this wire right here right, so i'll cut that strip that back uh cut me a little bit more length uh for like a jumper so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this long piece of black that's gonna go to my negative. We're gonna twist these two together. Right, so I have my two blacks twisted together. So this is gonna be the jumper that goes to the negative on the other side. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my positive. 
All right, so now we have our positives put together, the one that goes to the box and the one that uh, hits this coil. Now I'm gonna take the existing positive and I'm gonna turn the sub around and I'm gonna connect it to this positive and I'm gonna do the same thing with the negative as well. All right, all right, so both positive and negatives are hooked up together. I should be able to put this inside this enclosure and put my meter on these two terminals and it should read out one on. All right, so I got my positive and negative in there. It is reading one ohm. So shoot, let's go ahead and drill this bad boy in here. And uh, we're gonna hook our speaker wire up. Got an amp mounted nice right there. Shoot, it's time to get some bass going. Alright y'all, now I'm sorry for making that video so long, but I want to make it as detailed as possible. And if you found any value in this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And stay tuned for the next video where we do a couple bass demos with this new Cadence Sound Beast. Until next time, this is your boy JP signing out.